Thursday morning. You're on WCLU, and you're on the right place to find some locally produced, fascinating information about the place we call home. Yes, the program is called The Archive. Sam Terry, well-known historian and archivist, is with us this morning. Sam, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you today, Henry? I'm good. And, of course, Sam's got uh, other uh, folks who have really been involved in making sure that the history of this place continues to be mesmerizing. People like Gail Berry and a bunch of volunteers from the South Central Kentucky Cultural Center, including Miss Debbie Pace. And uh, just, I don't know, we get, I'll just say it this way. We get a lot of nice comments about the archives, and we truly, truly appreciate the comments. We appreciate knowing that people are getting a lot of stuff out of this daily program, and uh, and I know you do as well. I certainly do. So with that being said, let's start uh, the Thursday edition. That was 100 years ago this day, and a big story in the Glasgow Times about full cry kennel of this city has received an order for a brace of trig foxhounds to be shipped to Panama. Mr. Paul Greer and Lance Trigg, operators of this kennel, have received orders for hounds from every state in the Union and have even made shipments to Africa. The Trigg strain of the hound is blue blood and they are prize winners wherever known. I, I remember as a little kid uh, just, you know, my parents talking about how famous the Trigg foxhounds were and that, that big state uh, marker out there on that highway, I can't remember which highway it is, but it's the big Trig Foxhound mm -hmm. uh, historic marker. Uh, it, it must have been something. Uh, yes, it was. And, uh, uh, and, and the, the connection to Africa was that the great uh, big game hunter Paul J. Rainey, mm -hmm. who had friends here in Glasgow through the Trig family, right. uh, bought all kinds of trig hounds and took them with him to Africa on his hunts there. And uh, he's a, and he's a fascinating individual if you want to look up Paul J. Rainey and some of the things that he uh, he was involved in. Well, if I was going to look something up, I was going to be looking up how much of a quantity is a brace. Two. A pair. Two? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't have to look that one up, so you've taken away all my fun, Sam. <laughs> But you are smart, and I know that going in. Well, I had to look it up myself. <laughs> okay, all right. And you're honest, too. <clears throat> all right, 1934. This is the news in the Glasgow Times about B.G. Ellis, well-known and prominent member of the Barron County Bar, died in a hospital in Lincoln, Illinois, where he was under treatment. Descended from pioneer families of Barron County, Mr. Ellis was one of the largest property holders in Glasgow, and he left a substantial fortune in cash. He had a bright, quick mind and was one of the best-informed men in Glasgow. He is survived by his daughter, Miss Nona Ellis. Paul Bears included John Richardson, Vichel H. Jones, Paul Greer, Frank Jones, E. H. Smith, Curtis Jones, George J. Ellis, and J. C. Hutcherson. Interesting, 1934. Yes, you will find uh, B.G. Ellis popping up in all kinds of newspaper articles uh, from this time period and proceeding at a well-known person. And it's interesting that so quickly in their write-up, they mention how much cash he left. <laughs> Usually that doesn't make the same news story. Yes, different way of uh, reporting news in 1934. And, and I believe... I think now I'm going to do this. I'm going to. We're on the air, but I'm going to ask you this, Miss Nona Ellis, his daughter. Didn't she live on College Street? Yes. Because I was her paper boy. Yes. For a long time, she was. When I was delivering her paper, she was a, a was a very nice but very frail and very private sort of a person, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't mean anything other than the fact that you've confirmed that I'm remembering the same person. All right, that was 1934. 1944, Sam, we have news about uh, Miss Ruth Winninger of Glasgow Route 1. She was awarded class honors in the February graduating class of the Lois Glenn School of Beauty Culture of Bowling Green. Nice honor. Nice to have, a, uh, have an award winner like that here in 1944 uh, in Glasgow and studying uh, to the extent of winning that honor. It's 1954. We have this news story about uh, Miss Leela Ann Dickinson, who will go to Louisville to compete in a piano contest sponsored by a piano company there. 
She'll be accompanied by her teacher, Mrs. Lanson Trigg. I wonder how many people Mrs. Lanson Trigg taught to play the piano around here. I Sam. would say thousands. Uh, she is always uh, and must have been quite a likable lady too, because uh, it's neat to see her associated with all the the love of music that we report here on the archives. And that was 1954. 1964 in the archives, we have news about the high school students Carolyn Garner, Nancy Peterson, and Sharon Sharp attending the spring convention of the Kentucky Future Teachers of America in Frankfurt. The girls are members of the Linus Reese chapter at Heisville School. What about that in 1964? The Future Teachers, the, the Linus Reese chapter, that was, I guess, a an FTA chapter named after a certain educator? Yes, Lennis Reese was a longtime principal <clears throat> at Heisville High School and uh, uh, father of Mr. Carter Reese, mm -hmm. grandfather of the late Bob Reese that uh -huh. many of us knew and appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, nice fellow. Quite a family of educators for sure. 1974 in the Glasgow Republican, speaking of our love of music, there was a music program that was part of the Temple Hill PTA meeting Dancing children included Moretta Crabtree, Todd Jones, Angela Perkins, Jimmy McClard, Tracy Bartlett, and Jamie Elmore. Come on down to Temple Hill and be entertained at the PTA meeting there in 1974. It was 1984. Sam, we have news about Hubert Gentry. He is the third person to actually retire from the Eaton Glasgow plant. Uh, there was a uh, picture in the Glasgow Times uh, showing uh, plant manager Don Doty, along with Mr. Winston Bailey and Bobby Carey, a foreman, hosting the retirement luncheon. Now, Eaton uh, has a long history of having done it right. They hired quality people. They made sure they were appreciated. They made sure they were honored. And that's just one more example of that, Sam. Certainly. And made careers. 1994, we've got some news here about uh, the controversial call of the year. It happened 10 years ago today when the Trojanettes of Barron County lost to Greenwood in the regional semifinals. Uh, and, of course, the controversial call, according to our archives, is that a referee allowed a basket after the game had ended. <laughs> that, uh, that's got to be, of course, that was long before... Uh, instant replays and all that sort of stuff. Well, and, and I might add that uh, that's actually 30 years ago. Oh, 30 today. years ago. All right. So uh, that's pretty big pretty big doings right there, and that's one you don't ever get over. No, you won't forget it if you yeah, were there. That's right. 2004, the Barron County Progress reports the Berksville Fertilizer Company 88 store, owned and operated by Clay and Bobby Richardson, opened at 242 no Bob Road. I think I went out there to that ribbon cutting, if I'm remembering correctly. Sounds familiar. And in 2014, we have news that the uh, Barron County uh, Trojans have won the 15th district tournament for a third straight year in 2014. And the Glasgow Lady Scotties captured the 5th district title. Uh, this was in uh, 2014. And uh, that was the, uh, the news in the Barron County Progress in 2014 another interesting day in the archives that's right we're short we're seeing it ramp up the sports news is ramping up and ag is picking up and the archives are picking up too so i we just need to go ahead and send out the invitation to come back for the friday edition we'll probably wrap up some of these groundbreaking things okay i think we will thank you for being here with us today sam it's always a pleasure and we'll come back again with the archives tomorrow here on wclu